Welcome, welcome, welcome to the San Francisco 49ers Morning Show. I'm your host, former NFL and NFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And as always, man, we're going to get into the 49ers. And this is QB Monday, our QB Monday. So Greg Pinelli will be joining us to talk about the performance of Jimmy Garoppolo and even uh, Justin Fields. want to get into some of Justin Fields and what we saw from him. Uh, obviously, if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, Underdog Fantasy, this show is powered by Underdog Fantasy. And I do want to say, man, I made some money yesterday. Lost some, I missed out on some. Justin Jefferson, not there, so there's a couple things that happened to me playing Underdog Fantasy. All right, and Underdog Fantasy, for those of you who don't know, it's an app. Obviously, it's surrounded by fantasy football, but they also have prop bets, player uh, things you can do over unders. And uh, Jamar Chase made me miss out on two hundred dollars. It was just a two dollar. Uh, it was a ten dollar parlay I put in, but two hundred dollars because he did not get over the over on five and a half ca- uh, catches. And then Justin Jefferson, I had I put thirty dollars down on Justin Jefferson to hit uh, the over on his touchdowns, which was basically he just had to score one touchdown, and he did not get that, and that ended up costing me ninety bucks. Or not costing me 90 bucks, but making me miss out on it. So, Underdog Fantasy, if you haven't already, make sure you guys download the app. And don't blame Chase. Blame yourself for taking it over. <laughs> I know. My bad. My bad. Okay, it's not Chase's fault. It's on me because I took the over with Chase and um, I missed out on 90 bucks. Or, excuse me, 200. All right, but if you haven't already, download the Underdog Fantasy app. Promo code Crocky. All right, do that right now. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers win. They go to 3 and 4 the 49ers are actually, uh, they have the same amount of losses as the team in the 70s. So there are a lot of people that were, I don't want to say panicking, because definitely it was a time to panic. 49ers are 2-4. and four. That was not the expectations for this team. But the 3-4, and four, they have the same amount of losses as the team in seventh place, in the uh, which is the last place uh, to head into the playoffs, the wild card round, right, seventh seed. So um, that's awesome. They're right there. They're right there in the thinking things. They're right there in the mix of being a playoff team. And I get it. It, It's the Chicago Bears. We're not looking at the Chicago Bears as a team that is, uh, you know, supposed to win a bunch of games or whatever the case is. But you had to win that game. 49ers are 3-1 and on the road. I don't know what's up with that. All right. Uh, You had to win that. If you guys haven't already, obviously, uh, myself, my co-host, Brian Peacock, we had a rapid reaction show. So that is Locked On 49ers. Make sure you guys listen to Locked On 49ers. Go listen to that. Before you even listen to this, well, you're already here, so it's whatever. But Locked On 49ers, Locked On NFL Draft, you know, I'm the co-host of that as well. Uh, you guys go ahead and listen to those shows on the Locked On Network. All right, but again, back to the 49ers. And this is what we're going to be talking about until we get with Greg Pinelli, who will be on in 20 minutes. We got a 49ers win, a 7C, Jimmy Garoppolo, and the, the dynamic with Trey Lance. And what that performance does uh, for Jimmy Garoppolo moving forward in, in the sense of holding off Trey Lance. Uh, Debo Samuel obviously had an amazing day. He's second in the NFL in yards, only behind uh, Cooper Cup, who has played one more game than him. Debo is on pace for 1,989 yards, I believe. So almost 2,000 receiving yards. Crazy pace. Eliza Mitchell runs for over 100 yards again. I want to talk about him and his performance because there were some things that kind of jumped out to me. And the defense and the DBs, because the pass interference calls and stuff like that, that did not happen. You had one holding call. All right, so we're going to get into all of that real quick. And I also want to get into it with you guys. So because I have Greg Penelli coming on, we're going to start off by opening up this chat for you guys. So if you have anything that you want to come on and say live, come on right now, man. The vibes are good. I see the flames coming in. I see four flames from Brett Brooks. We need five flames in this thing, man. Let's go. Get episode today from Croc for Locked On. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Listen to that Locked On episode, man. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Uh, breaking news, Derek Henry suffered a potential broken foot versus Indy. That's tough, man, for the big dog. He's been running so well. And that was a guy, Derek Henry, talked about it a little bit late last night on the timeline. We had Rich Madrid, who said that the best three running backs in the league were he named three running backs. None of them were Derrick Henry. And I get it. Derrick Henry, he's not my favorite type of back. He's just this big mover. You know, it's kind of a one-cut guy. He has to get – his lateral movement kind of sucks. But the, the production, man, I mean, he just produces, produces, produces to the point where it's like at some point I can't continue to kind of doubt him. Even if he's not my favorite type of guy, he's still running back. He still has to be 
one of the top running backs in the league. Like he has to be top three. Not my favorite, not my favorite back. I don't care for the way he runs and moves and stuff. I like a little bit more dynamic and shiftiness with my running backs, but whatever it is he's doing, man. I mean, he's back to back rushing champion was probably well on his way to do it again this year. So uh, he 100% has to be a top three running back. And that's going to be, they're going to be tough for Tennessee because their whole offense runs through him. All right. But let's get to some 49ers and I'll wait for, I'll wait for my guy, Greg Pinelli, the quarterback guru to come on and talk about uh, the quarterback situation with Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance. But let's talk about Debo Samuel and kind of what, what he has done and what he means to this team, man, and, and uh, Khalil, uh, Khalil Young, Cali Young, I, I appreciate I, I know I'm butchering your first name, but Mr. Young, man, I appreciate the contribution. Uh, biggest injury, Kyler Murray might not play next week. That's big, too. Uh, Debo Samuel, he goes off to the tune of, what, 156 yards or whatever he had, had a big game. Early on, Debo had three drops. Not three drops, two drops, and then one where in the end zone kind of went off his hand or whatever. Debo had two drops, and and this is my thing, and and this will always be the case. And I look at this the same way with quarterbacks: Josh Allen, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Trey Lance. I think he's going to be in that category as well. If you are a playmaker, if you are a playmaker, I can live with drops. I can live with missed throws. Terrell Owens did not have the best hands, right? Like T.O., you know, at times would lead the NFL in drops. Guess what? I don't care. T.O. can lead the league in drops if he's going for 1,600 yards and, and making plays to where you win, right? So I look at Debo Samuel, and he had two drops, and I think I saw a stat. He's leading the league in drops. I don't care. Just like I talked about with the other quarterbacks, right? You got Patrick Mahomes. You got – uh, uh, Josh Allen. If you just watch Mahomes, if you watch Josh Allen, and maybe don't watch this year's version of him because it's not too pretty, but they will miss throws. They will throw a ball at the feet. They will have these random misses, right? Like they're not just the most pure, accurate quarterbacks, but they make so many plays that I can live with them misfiring, right? Same with Trey Lance. Trey Lance, he will get there. Trey Lance, even in the games that we saw, I can live with him misfiring on the slant or throwing a slant five yards over somebody's head because I know Trey Lance is going to make plays, especially the more comfortable he gets. The, the random misses will probably always be there, but he's going to make plays and he's going to win you games. Debo Samuel drops a couple passes. I can live with that. Debo makes plays. Third and 20, he takes a screen 83 yards. 83 yards. And it wasn't really like, I guess technically it was blocked up to have that big of a game, but it really wasn't. A lot of it had to do with his ability, catching the ball, uh, his um, just the vision, the acceleration. I don't know if you guys, if you go back and watch the acceleration from Debo Samuel on that screen, I mean, just hit the ground and just fire it, like just shot through like a cannon, man. Like the dude is, is he he has some terrific explosiveness. All right, so uh, Debo Samuel, over 150 something yards. I put out a tweet today about how many yards he has on the season. All right, let me look at that right now. And he has, let's see, hold on, hold on, guys, hold on. Put out a tweet about his yards and where he stacks up. All right, so Debo Samuel is currently second in the NFL in yards. Obviously, uh, Cooper Cup has uh, played one more game than him, but Debo is sitting at 119 yards in seven games. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, he's averaging 18.6 yards per catch, which is second, at least in the top out of the top five guys, to only um Jamar Chase, who's averaging 20.7 and actually went down because he didn't have a great game last last game. But Debo Samuel, man, he, he's on this hist historic pace. And I kind of tweeted out that he's on pace for uh 1989 yards. Or yeah, Calvin Johnson's record was 1964. Obviously, Calvin Johnson did it in one less game. But Debo, man, he's balling. And it's crazy because I was talking about it. I was talking about it, man, on this channel. If you guys have been watching for a while, especially in the offseason, uh, talked about how Debo, you know, that was a guy, fantasy. And I got a lot of pushback on that. I got a lot of pushback on it. But I was like, that's the guy, fantasy, man. I mean, Debo Samuel, man, I can live with some of the drops. Dude's a playmaker. He's phenomenal. Is he just this pure wide receiver one in the sense of how I think we are supposed to, uh, how we've been told to view a wide receiver one. Maybe he's not that, but 
That don't matter. Dude's special. He is special.